Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. I am super excited about this video because it's the start of a series I had wanted to launch right at the beginning when I first started my channel last year in January, talking about luxury travel and holidays. But a month later after launching, the pandemic happened and the rest is history. But I'm going to start and just do a slight variation. When I talk of luxury travel and holidays, I'm referring to, for example, traveling privately, um, holidaying on a yacht, a super yacht, the holiday options that are available to you on a yacht, and just how to navigate that whole terrain, as well as looking at holidays. So hotels, resorts, villas globally, with an emphasis, as you can imagine, uh, in keeping with the theme of my channel on quality establishments, so the product itself, the service, and places that are very much under the radar. And I'm going to kickstart the series with staycation inspiration. As you know, in the United Kingdom, we are going through a traffic light traveling system where we can only go to certain parts of the world without having to either self-isolate or quarantine. And what I will focus on is places in the United Kingdom that are at the top end of the market, um, but very much under the radar. You don't hear too much about them there kept under wraps people want to keep these places to themselves but i just i'm going to shine the light on a few places and i'm going to kick off with a phenomenal place in hampshire and it has been described as quite possibly the most impressive country hotel in england it's heckfield place i'm anesu sagond and i produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things so whether you're someone who is new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain or you're comfortable with luxury, but you want to focus more on brands that are under the radar and packing a mighty quality punch, or you are young and wanting to start out um, by reaping the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, then my content is very much geared towards you. Heckfield Place is an hour and a half's drive from central London on a good day without too much traffic. 45 minutes from Heathrow, just over an hour from Gatwick, and 30 minutes from Farnborough if you're traveling in privately. You can also take the train to Heckfield Place and you have at your disposal access to a chauffeur-driven Land Rover to use during the course of your stay. And they can organize pickups and drop-offs from train stations or if you're participating in off-site activities. Headfield Place is set on 400 acres of verdant, sprawling, but most of all secluded Hampshire landscape that's made up of gardens and woodland. Once you take the turning for Heckfield Place, drive through the gates, the further down you drive um, towards the hotel, the often heavy noise of traffic associated with London becomes a very distant memory as you drive towards the hotel and by the time you arrive at the hotel the only sounds literally around you are bird song and the chitter chatter of guests um, on site when you arrive at uh, the gates you're met by security who take your details and then radio through to the next person in the car park and what ordin ordinarily happens is you're ushered through to the hotel to drive straight straight down the drive it's a four or five minute drive to the hotel but because of covid they show you where the car park is and then you drive to the hotel drop off your luggage and then come back and drop off your car ordinarily there's valet parking but because of covid it's not possible you're ushered into the main part of the hotel which is focused around an 18th century georgian manor house which is also a home a very grand home but a home nonetheless. Heckfield Place is very much geared towards providing um, a hotel experience that feels incredibly homely in terms of the decor, the feel, and the way the service is provided. Immediately upon walking in, you are met by the general manager, Olivia Richley, something I would expect from an establishment of this ilk warmly welcomed exchange pleasantries she's she inquires about your journey and then she assigns a member of staff to look after you during the course of your stay to field any questions you may have or organize anything you'd like to do you're then guided to the residence only space to the right that comprises of a morning room a drawing room and a bar we took a seat in the bar the morning uh, the moon bar 
and they encourage you just to read through the check-in paperwork and to confirm you're happy with the rate. Once that is done, you're shown to your room where your luggage is waiting. And when you arrive, um, the butler cuts uh, a straw tie that's tying the, the door to signify as part of strict COVID hygiene regulation that nobody set foot into the room after it was cleaned. You drop your bags, freshen up, and then come back to the residence only space for afternoon tea. Check-in is typically between 4 and 5 p.m. at Heckfield Place, but we opted for early check-in at 3 p.m. But traffic out of London was horrible, and we arrived late after 4. And we had hoped to arrive in time for late lunch and then afternoon tea about 4.35 but um, arriving after four, it meant we had the check-in and then afternoon tea from about 4.30. So it was lunch rolled into afternoon tea. And then once we're done, we had a couple of hours to kill before dinner time. So we had a little snooze and then supper was served about 8.30. Uh, we chose to sit in the morning room for afternoon tea and lunch. There are three rooms that are for the access of residents only. There's the morning room where you have your morning papers, so your broadsheets. You have two very big, squashy, very comfortable sofas. There's a curated selection of books, board games, um, seating space, and a table for you to work on. That leads on to the drawing room. And in the drawing room, you have various seating spaces, an original fireplace, and a big antique mirror. Take a seat and relax on the chairs, snooze, chat, read, whatever you would like. And then next to the drawing room is the moon bar. And that again is, as I mentioned, residence only. And the beauty of that is you can go there for a drink any time of the day. Darkly, sumptuously walled uh, bar with, very with a very intimate layout. And there's a big disco uh, ball in the middle. After dinner, you can, you can have drinks in there and it stays open as long as residents are drinking. When the last resident leaves, then they will close. So if you want to leave at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, they will keep the bar open for you. So I had afternoon tea and lunch in the morning room and then retired to the room afterwards. But worth noting at this point is one of Heckfield Place's unique selling points is the whole concept of it being a working farm and their farm to table concept. The working farm ensures that they produce the majority of food um, that is prepared on their menu, served in the hotel, in the rooms, the mini bar, for example. So the, the fresh fruit and vegetables are grown there and also the animals are reared. What they aren't able to produce or rear or grow on site is it's sourced from a local producer and the main producer they work with is Fern Ferro. So after tea, retired to our room where we had a little snooze for about an hour before getting ready for supper, which was at 8.30. So we were in the bar from about eight for drinks. There are 45 rooms at Heckfield Place, 38 rooms, six signature suites, and one lodge. The rooms entry level, you have the friend's room, they're typically sized from between 33 to 39 meters squared and start from about 500 pounds a night. Next level up is your guest rooms, then the chamber rooms, then you jump up to the master rooms. They have larger living spaces, so they're great for your longer stays. Typically sized from between 42 through to about 68 meters squared, and they start from about 1100 pounds a night. And then above that is your six signature suites, and every suite is different. They start from about 1,500 pounds a night, and they're sized from between 60 through to 90 meters squared. And I was incredibly fortunate enough to stay in one of the suites, and in particular, Oka, which is located on the first floor in the original Georgian Manor house. You come in and you immediately met by the stylish decora decorations. There's a, there's a whole theme of brown and yellows, various hues of yellow in the room. Immediately to your right, you have a wooden headboard and then an empress sized bed with the most silky smooth Italian bed linen. You literally struggle every single morning to get out of bed. Unless there's a reason you need to get out quickly, lions were massive. 
And then ahead of that, you have a seating space with the sofa, table, and then in front of you, you have a Bang & Olufsen TV, as well as a Bang & Olufsen phone. So the gadgets were Bang & Olufsen. And then to the right, you have um, an original fireplace and then the mini bar. And the mini bar, very different to what you typically will find, even at some of the other top end hotels, but there weren't any of your commercial items like chocolates and crisps and so forth. So forth. Instead, what you had was all the food items, whether they were nuts or various types of biscuits, they were all baked on site, freshly baked on site, and the alcohol, non-alcoholic drinks also produced on site. The only thing that was chargeable in the minibar was the alcoholic be beverages. There was also a really snazzy uh, pot for heating your water for the tea and coffee. Fantastic little mini bar, and you always found yourself snacking. Snacks were amazing, freshly prepared, and you could just get them topped up once they were done. And then next to the bed, table with antique mirrors, a few antique uh, decorations, and then a curated selection of 17th, 18th century British writers. And then swinging around to the left towards the bathroom, you have the leather bound table antique mirror and handcrafted furniture on there and then you also had um, an ipad uh, with the room that was also on the table and that ipad just goes through the room the facilities but more so there's a tab for the artwork and this is all the artwork in the hotel it's owned by the owner of the hotel it's all from his private collection and it's artists that were working in the united kingdom in the mid 20th century so every single piece um, in the hotel is detailed on in the tab so you can find the artist and also locate additional work that they've done and then all the flowers as well in the room are grown on site every single flower not just in the room but the hotel and then you come into the bathroom and it's just brown marble everywhere immediately to your left seating area and then you also have the wardrobe with your usual amenities so your dressing gown slippers and so forth and the beauty of the seating area in the bathroom is because of the size, the bathroom is bigger than the bedroom. It's so comfortable. You can actually work from there, sit in there, have tea, have a conversation, not feel as if you're sitting in a bathroom cooped up in there. It doesn't even feel like the bathroom because of the size. It's, it's a separate area. And then you have his and her sinks and all the amenities, so your toiletries, um, are from William Wildsmith. And William Wildsmith was actually the gardener at Heckfield Place in the 18th century. And he also created an arboretum at Heckfield Place. So all his products are, are pretty much plant and organic based. And then a separate water closet. And then coming round, you have the walk-in uh, marble shower. And I like the screen at the front, just the distinction between the shower, you have the screens, you have a bit of privacy. So you can have two people comfortably in that space and not feeling as if they're on top of each other and there isn't um, a bit of privacy as well. And then a, literally the piece de resistance of the, uh, the bathroom, the roll top bathtub, it actually starts all the way from the bottom. So you literally need to fill it just a little under halfway and your whole body is just immersed in water and then the bathtub just hugs you from the back you have the views in front of you of the garden the sun streaming in the fresh air the bird song it's absolutely blissful every morning was spent in there literally an hour was just spent collecting my thoughts and just enjoying the moment in that bathtub coupled with the fact that getting out of that bed was just so difficult. The linen made all the difference. The comfort of the bed, the firmness was amazing. And I struggled with the fact that I'm not someone to spend time in a hotel room, but this room warranted a whole day where I was just reading, relaxing in the bath, having conversations, having meals, just in the room, the size was comfortable, 60 meters squared. So you never felt cooped up with another person. You were just uh, just in heaven literally the room was amazing it was a good size and it was so stylishly decorated very comfortable and and inviting you just wanted to spend your time there and felt I really got my money's worth and then on to the restaurants tried the two main restaurants there's the Mao that's very well known and it's actually been voted one of the best um, alfresco restaurants in the UK and then the hearth which is a residence only uh, restaurant 
There are two ways to get to Mal Restaurant. You either use the main entrance into the hotel and then turn left and follow your nose, or there is um, its own separate entrance, which is about 15, 20 meters down to the left of the main entrance. As I mentioned before, Mal is for guests and non-guests as well. I typically use the main entrance because coming out of the suite, the staircase you used to come down to the ground floor um, came out directly in front of the main entrance. So you'd come down the stairs, turn left and walk straight up. I tended to use that en entrance all the time for Mal because breakfast was also served in Mal for guests and non-guests. And it gave me a chance to walk through the hotel. And the hotel is beautifully decorated in the most simple manner. They've used core pieces which have been highly effective. Um, you have the Persian rugs throughout. You have the grass uh, wicker baskets filled with blankets. You have the original fireplaces. You have antique mirrors. The most spectacular artwork from the owner's private collection. And you have the most charming floral arrangements dotted throughout the hotel. And the florist is Kitten Grayson. So you'd, I'd take that all in each time I walked through to Mal for breakfast or the first evening for dinner. And as you walk straight through, on your right hand side, there is a dining room. And the dining room has a big and beautiful dried flower chandelier. Great room for private events, for weddings, for parties. It overlooks the gardens, you get the most breathtaking views. You have the light streaming in. And the first, uh, the second day we were there, they actually had a spread for afternoon tea. And this was just more a treat for the guests because it was the first weekend that the hotel was at 100% occupancy and they had salmon and cakes and um, scones and so forth. It was a massive and the most delicious spread you can imagine. So it's all freshly made. Um, the cream has been freshly whipped and it's, it's just lightly sweetened. It was just heaven. The jam is made on site as well. So you walk straight through and Mal is in front of you. You have the entrance with a number of floral arrangements all around. They really pick up the room and there's a seating space for you to have your pre-dinner drinks. And then to the right is Mal. Great space, whether, wherever you're dining, just to have drinks in that space. And then as you turn right for Mal, you walk straight through and Mal, as I mentioned, has been voted one of the best UK restaurants for our fresco dining. They have the most wonderful terrace overlooking the gardens, but the weekend we were there, it rained, so they didn't open the terrace uh, to guests or non-guests, but everybody sat inside and it's a fairly big space floor to ceiling windows so there's a lot of light streaming through very airy sun streams through as well they have skylight at certain points classic menu and the culinary director for mal as well as hearth is sky gingel and sky gingel is an australian born chef who is one of britain's most critically acclaimed she is the chef behind spring which is in somerset house and her whole ethos her whole focus is very much on fresh seasonal uh, food that has been simply prepared so you let quality of the food really shine through and she's very much into zero waste and I think Fern Vero is actually one of the suppliers if not the main supplier of food at spring and Fern Vero also work with Heckfield Place so um, Sky Gingel's ethos works very well with uh, Heckfield Place's agenda so she consults on the menu. The menu changes, as you can imagine, depending on what's in season, what is available. Classic menu, a la carte for both breakfast and also dinner. I think they do do lunch, actually, although I didn't have lunch there, but I think they do all three meals of the day. And it's a classic menu and it's all about fresh seasonal uh, produce. And then coming out of Mal, straight ahead of you, um, stairs, down the stairs, and you have Little Bothy Spa, and then onto hearth. As you walk towards hearth, there's a games room to your right. Um, you have a couple of board games set up, chess, backgammon, and I'd imagine it's a residence only facility. I've seen people playing card games in there as well. It's pretty much a games room, so it gets a little noisy. Straight onto hearth, you walk into hearth. It's a brick walled, very cozy restaurant. Most of the chairs have the most decadent sheep hides on them you sit on them they're so soft and super warm and you just feel really comfortable in them uh, with hearth most of the food is prepared um, up front there's an open fire and there's also a pizza oven 
very much a sharing concept menu also a la carte like mal but they recommend three to five dishes for two people for example and like mal like everywhere else in heckfield place it's about fresh seasonal ingredients so the menu is going to change and it's very much going to be dictated by what's currently available i preferred the hearth menu and that's just because it, it worked. The stuff they had, the, uh, the produce was amazing. And it's the first time I've ever been to a restaurant and ordered a dish twice. We had um, the white asparagus twice. It had walnuts. It had an oil drizz drizzling on it. And then also had the feta cheese and broad beans. Loved the feta cheese because I'm not a feta cheese fan, but this feta cheese was fairly different. It had the tang, but it was very subtle. But it was incredibly creamy and it wasn't that dry texture you sometimes get with feta. And it worked very well with the broad beans. They're seasonal and it was all about the quality. You could really taste the sweetness of the broad beans. The other dish was also um, the pork chop with armagnac. It was soft, it was juicy, it was flavorful. And then there was also Cornish lobster and then desserts as well. I'm not somebody who takes pictures and it's only something that I'm learning to do now, taking pictures of my food. And I literally had to set a reminder for me to remember to take the picture. So those are gonna be all dotted through this. But if you are staying two, three, four nights at Heckfield Place, try both places, Hearth or Mal. But if you are only staying one night, I definitely say go for Hearth, it's residence only. The service is incredibly attentive. Sommelier was amazing. Same sommelier from the night before at Mao. I don't drink white wine at all, so I drink red wine with everything. Recommended an amazing Nebbiola to grow to go with my trout and also the sirloin. So it was light for the, uh, for the trout and perfect for my sirloin. And then at Hearth, he recommended Pinot Noir, which was perfect for the lobster, for the pork chop. The whole meal was finger licking delicious. I'm also gonna show you another restaurant um, just outside um, the main building. It's called The Glass House. It's a conservatory and that typically serves afternoon tea. It's more a daytime restaurant. Open to residents, um, but it wasn't in use during the weekend. And it tends to come alive when the weather really picks up. So from about June, I would say to about August, September, an afternoon tea served in there. But um, I'll just show you around now. Great place, you can even go in there and sit and read a book if you like, and they can bring food f food over for you. But when it's actually open, as you can imagine, it looks amazing, just like the other restaurants. And then the rest of the grounds, you have seating space all around the grounds, the front of the grounds, you have the deck chairs. And then in the evenings, they have fire pits around the deck chairs, which are fantastic. The only drawback is you smell really smoky at the end. And then you have um, the chairs and tables. You can eat lunch out there, have drinks. Um, they open up from the morning room. And then the rest of the grounds, there's a massive circular track around the grounds. You can walk around, you can jog, um, you can horse ride. You also have access to um, the woodlands, the vast woodlands around. As far as you can walk, you can go as far as you would like. There is a lake where you can swim in the wild. There are also a couple of boats. You can rent the boats and take them out on the lake. There's also the option to fly fish. There's also a pond as well next to the lake with a fountain and then there's a gazebo on the side. Great for picnics or just sit in there and chat or take a break um, whenever there's rain or whatever it may be. But Heckfield Place is a great hotel and I would say more for adults than for children, although they're starting to cater, I've seen children's games, but it's more adults. They love dogs. They're very dog friendly and it's great for couples because you can walk and talk. The space is vast. Um, you don't feel like other guests are on top of you at all. You have your, your privacy. And then there's also the biodynamic farm where a good chunk of the produce is grown. The animals are reared. You can see the greenhouses where they have the fruits, the vegetables. You have the herb gardens, um, the lettuce, the strawberries, everything that is on the menu at the moment. You can see out in the fields um, or in the greenhouse. There's also um, a section where they keep the bees for the honey. Um, then they also have the flower farm, but didn't make it out to the flower farm or the dairy farm. But then they are also chickens as well for the eggs that they have. Um, and then they have the animals, saw some pigs for the bacon, for the pork and so forth. All of that is out and about for you to access if you choose. 
They can also organize, in addition, um, tennis and also horse riding, which are off-site and you can be taken to, to participate wherever that's organized. There's also falconry. They can organize clay pigeon shooting. There's a badminton court. There's a croquet. Uh, set up. There's just so much for you to do and literally there's nothing too big or too small for them to do for you. You just have to let them know and they'll sort it out. But Heckfield Place is in my top five recommendations of staycation places in the United Kingdom. Top end of the market and as we've learned with the pandemic, tomorrow is not promised and a lot of people I've been talking to have been talking about just being good to yourself and splurging and doing the things you've always put off and said, let me save money, but um, save it for a rainy day. The rainy day may never come and spoiling yourself, doing things that are extra special, extra nice, especially at a time like this, I highly recommend. If you want to be thoroughly spoiled from a service point of view, you want the most spectacular, the most delicious, the most amazing food and drink, quality rest and relaxation, Heckfield Place pretty much ticks every box boldly. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Any other questions about the trip, about the place, let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, be good to yourself, be kind and splurge on something this summer.